When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright Well, hello everyone. Hope you're all doing okay today. Uh, so today, we're out exploring a new waterfall location. It is a secret location. I will admit, I'm generally not a fan of, of not sharing a particular location, but some of these more intimate ones, or more private ones, uh, that aren't necessarily mine to share, uh, I will tend to keep secret. Uh, obviously, bring friends or whatnot, fellow so photographers here is with me, but I won't publicly share the location. Now, I will say this is approximately two hours from where I live in Ottawa, so this is in eastern Ontario. It was a really nice drive uh, to get up here, and I'm not even at the waterfall. It's actually the waterfall. It's just back up that way, but I have to go down to go up, but this is just off the side of the road. Uh, no, side of the road, two hours from where I live in a major city, but nonetheless, just off the side of the road. So it's really not a big, difficult hike. Uh, even though there's a sign saying, be careful, caution, strenuous, you know, whatnot coming down here. It's actually a very nice trail for anyone that's, that's able-bodied. I just did a little bit of uh, drone flying there to really fully sketch out the location. Now, what I'm going to have to do to get the to the area I want, I'm going to have to do some rock scrambling, which isn't too, too bad. But uh, obviously behind me is where the river is, where the waterfalls are coming down. But I want to get to the upper waterfall, so I'm going to scramble over these rocks. Uh, hopefully don't break my neck doing so, because uh, that would be bad. Okay, so it's a very short scramble really just over these rocks here to get to this part of the location. So what I really like here is you got this really great leading line from the river itself right up to that uh, waterfall. And I think given the height of where I'm standing, uh, one, it gives me a pretty good clear shot, uh, good composition, I think. But ideally it's gonna cut out the sky. So right now the sky is very overcast, which is fine for what I'm shooting. Uh, but obviously to capture the sky in this photo, it wouldn't look too good. But anyways, enough jimmer jammering. Let's get to some photography. Okay, so here's a tip. And it's pretty much a tip for any time you're doing photography, uh, especially landscapes, but definitely even for portrait work, is you notice I didn't take out my tripod, plant it, and then put my camera on top. Hold up my camera. So that's my Sony A7R III with a Sony 24-105 on it. And what I did was I walked around, and you notice I moved around and tried a few different uh, compositions, just hand holding it. So I found a spot I like kind of down there uh, with a bit of a zoom. Actually, here's a great point. A 24 to 105 is a great landscape photography lens. And the reason why is it's got such a great range and you also don't need a shallow depth of field for most landscape photography. So even though this is an F4, uh, you know, lowest aperture, 
opposed to say the 2.8 on my 16 to 35. F4 is generally good enough for most uh, landscape photography. So it's a great, great lens, this, this 24 to 105. Uh, so given my kit is the 16 to 35, 24 to 105, and the 100 to 400, I've, I've got uh, pretty much the entire range, unless I'm really doing like some bird photography um, and some macro stuff. So anyways, this is uh, just a great tip. Walk around with your camera, find the composition, then get out your tripod, then get set up. So we're gonna do that now. So let me quickly walk you through here. So as you can see, got my camera set up. It's in a portrait orientation. And actually, I didn't buy this until, was it, uh, it would have been sometime uh, last year because I had my trip in January to uh, the Rockies. But it's this. So having an L bracket on your camera is, is beautiful because is it makes it very quick and easy to change from a portrait to a uh, horizontal orientation shot. So let me walk you through here. So you can see with this shot here, the river is basically a nice little leading line up to the waterfall. I have purposely excluded the sky, which if I pan up here, you kind of see. Now, what I'm likely to do is gonna take a few different shots because it is pretty tight, as you'll notice, on top of the waterfall. I think I've got a little more room to go there and that would give me a bit of propping room. So in simple settings here, I'm in AV mode, F11. It's giving me 0 0.6 of a second, which is pretty good uh, shutter speed. Now in terms of selecting a shutter speed, there is no specific shutter speed to get for a waterfall photography. Although you're probably looking around a second to two seconds. Now, but the waterfall is not the only thing to keep in mind. We do have uh, the trees here and the leaves and the branches. Although some are moving here right in front of me a bit. Uh, thankfully there's not a lot of wind in this canyon at the moment. But if there is, you'd have to do a shutter speed specific for that to freeze. Uh, the leaves. And then of course we have the river here, sometimes a little pond or pooling area. In fact, I can see there's a pond pooling area up there, which on today's visit I may or may not get up to. So those are the three things you really need to be mindful of when selecting your shutter speed. is the waterfall itself, moving trees, and the river or a potential pooling area here. So right now I'm at a, uh, 0 0.6 of a second. Um, which is pretty good. I'm gonna play around with that, so that's another great tip. Is, especially digital photography, there is nothing wrong with trying a few different shutter speeds to see what works for your particular location. Experiment is, is the name of the game. Now, one thing I just did in terms of experimenting with shutter speeds is actually just specific to the waterfall. Now, if you notice, the top part of the waterfall, there isn't well, there's a lot of water coming off of it, but you can see the rock formation behind it. Where if you start looking down in this area, it's basically a sheet of water and it's like white water. So I have actually did a number of different shutter speeds to try to get a little more texture in the bottom part. Because that is key aspect of the waterfall is you don't want to just make it stop like a stamp. You want to see it get some motion, but too much motion and you just get this white watery stuff. Now you can see I have a different composition here, uh, basically horizontal, but I've really stretched it out. I have the waterfall come in, 
and I catch these uh, rock. When I got back home, I actually did not like the portrait orientation shot I showed at the beginning of this video. However, this one here I really liked that has the stream basically running from the lower left right up to the waterfall. And I do believe the horizontal nature of the photo that grabs more of the the greens and the mosses and the just overall ambiance of this waterfall location, I think really hits it. This is a similar photo, except I got right in front of the stream with the water flowing right at the camera, which I find nice and powerful. Similarly, horizontal shot leading right up to the waterfall. Now for both of these images, I actually did a time blending. Please let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to know more. Okay, so I'm wrapping things up here at uh, this waterfall location. Now, I must admit, I had my very first real uh, drone incident where I accidentally flew it in the side of the, I guess the canyon here. So I'll spin you back here. So there's the, the waterfall and I drift it all the way up there. Now I had not intended to go skip that area today. I'm like, well, I'll have my water shoes or change of socks or whatnot. But no, I uh, had to go up and collect my drone. Thankfully, it looks like it just took a little tumble. It didn't land in the water. It landed on a rock cropping. So that was good news. I'm definitely going to be back. I think there's going to be an opportunity for a bit of fall colors in this area. In fact, you can kind of see some of the trees appear to be changing color now. That is unacceptable. It is still summer and it cannot be fall colors yet. Not yet. I do not want summer to end yet. But I don't think Mother Nature is going to listen. So good news. My little DJI uh, Mavic Mini, uh, who I have nicknamed uh, Stella, she is doing all right. Uh, as you can see from this drone footage, uh, I got up after the little tumble. She is doing great. Nothing, nothing seems to be wrong with her, which is very good news. So she will live to fly another day. So anyways, with that, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time.